November 5th, 2020. That is the day that I published a video called Elvish on Duolingo? Question mark. And today, after almost one and a half years, I'm here to tell you that... Wait, what exactly am I here to tell you? Firstly, unfortunately, I don't think that Duolingo has seen the video or heard any of our prayers, but it also may be the case of just not making a public statement. To recap briefly, my conclusion last time was that, yeah, it would be very difficult to create a certified, fully correct and extensive Elvish course on any language learning app. And keep in mind that we're talking about uh, Mr. Tolkien's Quenya or Sindarin, um, but Quenya seemed more probable at the time and still does, in my opinion. But okay, let's not beat around the bush anymore. Last time I checked, there is none. There is no Elvish course on the OWL app. <laughs> and that's what I mean. Maybe Duolingo hears fans just absolutely screaming into their ears, we want Elvish, especially seeing as there has been some development in this area a couple of years ago, but because of the you know challenging nature and uncertainty that comes with creating a true Elvish course, complete with exercises and stuff, uh, you know, from beginner to at least intermediate level. Maybe the Duolingo devs just don't want to make any public statements regarding this whole situation. I've even sent them two emails a couple of weeks ago to just amp them up and ask directly, but I got nothing. No response, <laughs> no peck, none. And even though it's not like it's the most urgent and the most important thing in the world, I still don't want to lose hope. So I decided, hey, Duolingo, let me help you in any way that I can. For example, by making a general roadmap and generating ideas on how an Elvish course should be developed, integrated with your app and stuff like that. In fact, let's do that right now. Let me show you what I came up with. First of all, as always, every project needs a project coordinator. And all I'll say is that my door is always open. So Duolingo, you have my number, right? So just yeah, give me a call and uh, we'll be in touch. And on that note, let's go further into it. Now, guys, if you didn't know, there is a site called Duolingo Incubator, where different communities create and upgrade various courses. Now, I'm sure that the Duolingo devs have the final say in whether a course finally lands on the app or not, but I just want you to know that it's not like Duolingo themselves create every line and every exercise in every single course. That would be madness. And we can actually use that to our advantage. It means that we don't have to wait for Duolingo to make the first move. So I did some research and I'd like to introduce you to some people who could help in creating a Sindarin or Quenya course if they wish to do so, of course. I'd like to just introduce you to some people who I consider experts in a particular field. So, let's do it. First, this is Helge Kore Fausganger, a Norwegian linguist behind the site Artalambion. It's one of my favorite Tolkien sites out there, and objectively speaking, a great bank of knowledge. If you've never been there, just open it right now. It's definitely worth it. Now, his formal education is more about Nordic languages, but he's been writing about Tolkien tongues for over two decades now. Again, I'm not saying that he's on board or anything, but if you are looking for an expert on elven tongues, this is it. It can't get much better. Next up, I think that constructed languages, more than anything, need huge community engagement. So we would need someone with quite a big reach. So let me introduce you to Jan Misli, the author of the series Conlang Critic on YouTube. I really like the idea and the series, and it's pretty big, so maybe, just maybe, we we'll need someone like Jan Misli with experience, you know, managing bigger communities. Maybe they'll be down. Now, one of the most underrated sites out there is Parf Edhelang. It's the biggest online Elvish dictionary, but actually, a more accurate description would have been just a site that helps people learn Tolkien's conlangs. And I love it. I love the design, I love how extensive it is, and although it's mostly community driven, I have recently learned that it has a manager of sorts whose name is Leonard. Definitely check this site out if you haven't already. 
but again, Duolingo, the community is out there. You just have to open the doors. And also, if you're talking experts and thinking about book authors on Tolkien's world building and languages, you know, there are definitely many, many competings out there, some better, some worse, but it's definitely one of the best ways to find other experts. And that's all we need, really. Some experts, a lot of community members, and a couple of managers working on this project. And with all this, I don't think it sounds too impossible, does it? The purpose of this video, for me, was to show you, Mr. Duolingo, that not only are there people who would kill for a Sindarin or a Quenya course on a mobile app, as they could just pop it open a couple of times a day whenever they have some free time, but also there are people who would be more than happy and, more importantly, qualified to create any sort of Elvish course. Of course, with your help. So, what do you say? What's the final verdict? Finally, you may have a little question on your mind right now. If there exists a page where you can submit new ideas for Duolingo courses, the incubator page, why wouldn't I submit an Elvish course there? After all, there are some conlangs out there, like Klingon and High Valyrian. So, why not Elvish? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First of all, in order to submit one, you have to be fluent in the language. And while well, some people say that you can be fluent in Klingon, Elvish is a little bit of a different story. You can definitely learn a lot, but I wouldn't say you can be fluent, per se. And more importantly, I definitely am not. Secondly, there used to be, I believe, a Quenya course out there in stage 1 a couple of years ago, but it's not there anymore. Probably for a reason. So that's why I decided to take this approach a year and a half ago. But in a year from now, if Duolingo still won't make a move, then I'll do it. I will try the incubator page. For now though, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. You've already done a lot to help the case, because you watched this video. So thanks so much for that. Thanks for existing everybody. And yeah, looking forward to hearing your opinions. So, see you soon.